Good afternoon, South Africa, and a very warm welcome to you. It's the start of a brand new week. My name is Jeannie Dean. Yeah, and I'm Bonnie Wooly. Welcome indeed. It is a brand new week, and our loft feels very different. Well, quite yeah. We've had a little minor moment, yeah. room renovation yeah, over just, the weekend. Just <laughs> tiny renovations. <laughs> <laughs> now, today on the show, we are absolutely privileged to have all the way from the US of A. He was made famous on his appearance of America's Got Talent. We have uh, Brandon Clark in the studio, mm -hmm. and he's joined by his amazing musical partner, and they're going to be performing right here in the loft. It's such a treat. We're also joined by our favorite, Kelly Schroeder, who's going to chat to us about how our health and our diet affects our sexual health. That should be quite interesting. Exactly. And uh, we've got Danilo in the kitchen. Indeed. Good afternoon, South Africa. Welcome to a brand new week. I'm Danilo Aquista. Now, Durban this weekend was so amazing, and I'll tell you why. Uh, after the July, I had a lot of our fans that came to us and said on the show, I don't know how you haven't put on weight with all the delicious food that you make on Afternoon Express. You look much skinnier in real life than you do on TV. So I was like, oh, that's so rude. But then I also thought we do make delicious food, we right, Clem? Absolutely. And today is another day just like that. Amazing. What are we making? So we're kicking off with a meat-free week. Ooh. I know. But that's the thing, we're, gonna, we're, not, we're skipping the meat, but not skipping flavour at all. Amazing. So we're starting off with a charred sweet potato and broccoli barley salad. Oh, it sounds super delicious. And I just literally had a conversation with a friend of mine today about the idea of going meat-free and trying to incorporate a lot more vegan-style things or uncooked. So I'm looking forward to seeing what we can create on the show today. If you want to find this recipe and the shopping list and make it with us on Afternoon Express, you can get it from our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. Everything we make on the show is available for you right over there. Now let's move on to our first performer. As a professional singer, Brandon Janes has spent much of the last decade singing in residence at the Metropolitan Opera, Los Angeles Opera, and Lyric Opera in Chicago. Off the stage, he has inspired millions by being about, uh, by simply being about his uh, sexuality and publicly disclosing his HIV positive status. He is currently in South Africa with his musical partner, Australian cello player James Clark. Together, they form the aptly named Brandon James. Salgo a buscar alguna buena señal, hacer mi sueño realidad, poder amar. Absolutely incredibly beautiful. beautiful, is that? Brandon James, welcome to Afternoon Express and welcome to South Africa. Thank you very much. I was reading up about you and I read that I think it was your grandfather, Jimmy, Jimmy Smith, Smith, performed yes. with Elvis Presley Johnny and Johnny Cash. Cash. Yes. How incredible is that? Was that, I don't know, did that contribute to you maybe wanting to go into music? Most certainly. I always idolized him and of course his stories from the road were incredible to hear oh, about. Oh, I would kill to hear those stories. Yeah, I'm sure some of them when I was a kid I wasn't able to hear because they were censored, of course, but um, yes, he was a huge inspiration for me and um, someone who I'll, I'll always look up, up to, uh, God rest his soul. Yeah. yeah. Were you always drawn to classical music right from the beginning or was it a journey that kind of evolved and led you there? It's very much a journey. You know, it's funny, I grew up, my mo do, you, do you know the, the sports figure Richard Simmons? He, yeah. he's a, he had this show called uh, Stop the Insanity and he, he was a, an exercise guru. and. Um, very famous in the United States, and my mom was his very first aerobics instructor. And um, I used to, I grew up listening to pop music because I would sit in the back of her aerobics classes and listen to Michael Jackson, <laughs> Whitney Houston, jam out to Madonna, that kind of stuff. So the fact that I got to classical music was just a complete accident. I had a, a mentor in high school when I started singing who just steered me in that direction. and. Um, it just felt like the right identity for me, and, um, and I've always stuck with it. Yeah, this is not your first time here. You've performed for the Mandela family before. I have, Tell yes. us about that experience, what did it feel <clears throat> like? Oh, it was an incredible experience. I was first here in 2009 at the Joburg Civic Theatre uh, with a group called the Twelve Tenors. We were here yeah. on a world yeah. tour, um, and it was just such an amazing experience to be in Joburg, and um, I think maybe the second to the last night before our show closed, uh, Zanani Mandela, uh, Nelson Mandela's daughter, came to our show and she really took a shine to me for whatever reason. And mm -hmm. um, I, we were invited back to their home and had this wonderful reception and uh, gave a private performance there for them. And then I came back again in 2014 uh, to sing for a, a Mandela relative's wedding. And uh, we're back here this time 
doing a whole bunch of things, um, some recordings and private performances and some other things Wonderful. as well. So. I really want to find out about your experience on America's Got Talent because I think it was one of those moments, you know, when, you, when I was watching the show, it's everyone goes quiet and I don't think anyone knew what to expect and then when you started performing it was just everything just held still for a while and it was absolutely amazing. What was the experience like for you? Um, it was mostly positive. Um, it is a little bit stressful. I think you work in TV, you would know. Um, certainly reality TV and live television is a different beast it's all in a, itself. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> it's like <laughs> yes, yes. Um, it's about a nine month process. I started uh, waiting in line with 10,000 people in, in Chicago, one of the cities that they auditioned in. Um, there was an ice storm that day and I remember just being outside in the freezing cold. Uh, but I was kept until the end and they said, we'll call you maybe, but we don't know. And then I got the call and I had the first audition, of course, and um, a standing ovation from all the judges and my wow. mom was there and it was just such a special moment and uh, I never really thought I would make it all the way to the end of the competition but yeah. um, standing uh, by myself at Radio City Music Hall with 14 million people at home watching was my legs were shaking but I think they just got the, the top half so no one saw luckily but it yeah. was a very um, a lot of pressure, but it's such a great experience, and I'm, I'm so happy I did it. And yeah, we see so many of those modern, uh, you know, music shows and talent shows on TV. But really, how does it change your life? Is it that kind of that moment that really does yeah, change your life? Light and dark. Yeah. yeah, it does. It really does, and it's it's not necessarily. It doesn't always translate into to fame and fortune and all the things you might think of. You, just, you still have to work very hard to to remind people who you are because you, you're on a show for a very short amount of time, and then. You kind of fade away, and then the next season comes, and there's a whole new excitement exactly. and a whole new group of people. But um, what it does is it really brings notoriety, and it's it's a brand that you can sort of carry with you forever, yeah. I think. Mm. Um, and it certainly helped me get to a lot of really great places. One of the things that you're you're known for is being very transparent and vocal about your sexuality and your journey with it, and telling your family for the first time. What are some of the challenges that you experienced, and the stories that you've shared with people around the world, and that they've shared with you? And what, what led you to deciding to just be tr that transparent? Well, I'll tell you, it, you know, it's sort of a, uh, it was such an interesting journey for me. I was about 20 years old when I came out to my parents. Actually, I, I didn't actually come out to them. They sort of let me know that they knew that I was gay. And, well, and, and they weren't that comfortable with helps. it. That actually helps. In some ways it does. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the follow-up to that was that they were not comfortable with it. And um, my whole story on America's Got Talent was ab about my relationship with my parents and, and how even though they didn't agree with, with um, who I was, that we still found a way to love each other. Mm. And it ended up being a beautiful story. And so much has changed since, since then. They have come around so much. And now I consider them some of my best friends. Um, but when I was on That's the show uh, and I told this story, I realized just from the outpouring of, of young kids especially around the world, um, in places like Egypt and Morocco, um, in the United States, who said they've been thrown out of their houses by their, by their family, or if they told someone they were gay, they'd be stoned to death. And they would confide in me on Facebook and Twitter and write these messages wow. to me. And I realized the power of being authentic and being true to yourself and how important that is and how you can really, really affect someone's life by just simply sharing who you are yeah. and that's why I decided mm. to be that way. But you've set up an organization now to support other people that were in a similar situation to you, no? Yes, it's just in the very beginning stages. Um, it's called You Belong and we actually have a, a single coming out uh, very shortly which uh, is called You Belong and it's a song just all about in inclusivity and how um, even, you know, even if you have a heartbeat, like we all belong and I feel like especially today with as volatile as the world is and it seems that humans don't want to treat each other with love and respect anymore and yeah. and we would like to see that return because we're all the same really. So how does the organization work? Right. How does You Belong work? Do people connect with you online or how do they get to know more information with what you're doing? Yes, um, well we have quite a, a big social media following uh, which luckily we've amassed and I, I say we because you'll, you'll meet my partner, my husband actually, yeah. in just a few minutes. Um, but anyhow, we, Yes, um, our at, at Brandon J Music, B R A N D E N J Music. Uh, that's our social media handle across all handles: Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, um, and they can connect there and find out more about the organization. And we'll be unrolling all sorts of things in the coming months. Amazing. Yeah, we that's still fun. have a lot more to talk to you about. But what are some of the things that viewers can look forward to? Places that they can see you, places where you're performing while you're here. 
Um, while we were here, we were, we were doing a concert on the 15th of July in Joburg. Um, at a, the venue is called The Venue. And yeah, it's we, at uh, the beautiful Melrose <laughs> yeah, Arch. It is. Um, and it is, it's uh, benefiting an organization called FEAST, which is an organization that provides scholarships for underprivileged kids who want to go into culinary arts. Um, wow. Yes, and um, they can, if anyone wants to go, I believe the, the price is 450 Rand, but it includes dinner um, and a, a full concert by us, which is great. And they can contact Linda at feastfoodandwine.com. Z -A. Z -A. Thank you very much. We'll put all of those all of those details on our website. Wonderful. We're going to be meeting your partner in a little while, yeah. and yes. of course, we're going to be treated to an amazing performance. So stay right where you are. And after the break, we are in the kitchen making a healthy sweet potato broccoli and barley salad. And Brandon James will perform live with us with his partner, cello player James Clark. You don't want to miss this. Welcome back to Afternoon Express, South Africa. We're about to make something super delicious in the loft today, but because it's a brand new week, we thought we'd try a brand new theme in the loft for this entire week. And so we're going meat-free completely throughout this whole week. And that's a, been a big challenge, I think, for Clem in some ways, because you and I both love meat so much. But the importance of making sure that we eat sustainably is a really, really important thing that all South Africans need to learn to embrace. And I think everyone is panicking. You take away the meat, you take away the flavor, and you take away all the nutrients. That's not, not true. Gonna be the case. Not at all. But we have to do a swap. We have to do a swap. I'm so sorry. What? I've got something on the griddle pan. I don't want it to burn. So I'm very glad that you said that because the reason we're doing this is not for health reasons. Okay. We're doing it because we do consume so much meat that like we want to give that production a bit of a break, you know? Yes, I agree. And just prove that like we can make delicious food that doesn't have to always have meat in there. Okay. So we're doing a, a, a oh, turning over there. We're doing a sweet potato and broccoli barley salad. Oh, yummy. So obviously we're gonna start it with our sweet potato. So if I can ask you, Dan, will mm -hmm. you start? Um, Slicing up our sweet potato for me. Sure, this guy. So I'm going to start talking about it while you're doing that. It's really difficult. Make sure you don't slice your fingers off. Get control of your sweet potato before you start slicing. How do you do that? Cutting it by cutting it in sure. half. Um, just to be safe, right? As a bit of a tip. Sometimes just cut a small piece off, just like that, okay, and that'll kind of be surface. your base. Okay, right? I see. So from there, I want to try and get nice big chunks of sweet potato. So almost okay. like a wedge, eh, but just eh, very big, eh. be rust, be rustic. There's no like right way to do it. Like that? Like, this is brilliant. So what I do is I cut that in two. Okay, so I'll make these but that's also, I, I like it. You see, we're not I'm even... Try, I'm trying to be slightly rustic with these things and keeping them... Cool. So, so what you've chunky. got now is you've got a perfectly flat side over there. Okay. So all you do is turn it over. Cut and you it's Nothing's going to rock around. So what you want to try and do is at least keep your sweet potatoes in the same size. So if you want to okay. do like big chunks like this, it's okay. As long as you keep the thickness similar to your long pieces, what that means is that your sweet potato is going to cook. Oh. Evenly. I see, but also you're going to be grilling it as well. So I guess I've kind of gone rustic with the size of it all so that they can sort of be different textures and things. But I hear what you're saying. Obviously yeah. keep them the same size so that they don't completely and, frick. And also, we're keeping the skins on. And I think that's very important. Besides the nutrients, extra nutrients that are in there. Ruffage. It's something It's about texture. So when you start talking about salads, people like immediately just like toss it in the bin. They're like, no, thank you. Don't yes. want to have that. And that's because of lack of texture whenever mm -hmm. people start talking about salads. With this, you've got a bit of that sweetness and the softness on the sweet potato, but you've also got a bit of the skin yes. in there, which is really important. And also a really nice tip if you maybe have overcooked your sweet potato, you will see that obviously the skin tries to keep the whole thing together. So if it does get nice and soft on the inside, the skin will obviously hold all the inside exactly. Exactly. Texture together, which is really cool. So, okay, what's next? The next part is this goes into some salted boiling water mm -hmm. for about, well, these size pieces, I'd say about 20 minutes. Okay. And it'll be just tender, and you take it out, let them steam just on the counter. That mm -hmm. excess moisture will steam off. Give it a light brush of olive oil and start charring them. So, I've got mine that are going over there okay, right cool. now. You can see the smoke coming out of there. Mm -hmm. You so want to brown them slightly. Exactly. The we've okay. taken the meat element out, but we added that smoky char back into the sweet potatoes. So that flavor of the meat's actually back in our dish. And the chew is also in there, which is exactly. nice. So you're okay, not cool. missing that flavor at all. So next part is obviously our barley, right? Yes. So I'm using barley because barley is like so cheap, it's basically free. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the way you're keeping money in, in account for these things, because vegetarian diets and diets that are obviously got a lot more of these different ingredients in them can be quite expensive to keep, keep them in check. That's so very true. I'm glad you're keeping us so money-wise. with the whole world talking about quinoa and, uh, like, all these other amazing grains, which are really good for you, it's, you should never forget the basics. Yeah. I mean, barley is it's cheap and it's amazing, it's delicious. One it's trick is, right... for you. So good. So um, barley goes into your water, 
and you Hot, bring it up. cold water? I like using it from cold water. There's cool. something about it, just the texture just changes so much. But it's also worth mentioning that there's no salt in there. Okay. Which is quite different, because every time we ever cook something different. in water, we've always added all that seasoning in there. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do this, because what happens is the salt in the water actually causes the body to have a rougher exterior, a bit oh, more no chewier. Chewy, chewier is a word. Yes, it is. So what you want to do is cook it and then season it afterwards. Okay. Tip. So bring it up to the boil now, and also it gradually brings up the temperature yes. by cooking, and then it cooks the barley even. Also, think about there are lots of different ingredients you're going to put here into your different salad. You don't want everything to be so salty that everything just becomes seasoned and salty. You want to try and keep it as diverse as possible. Absolutely. In terms of flavors. Okay. So the next part is our broccoli. So mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I'm crazy about raw broccoli. Me too. So, but today, just for our viewers out there, we're going to cook it a little bit. We're just going to add it to some salted boiling water, mm -hmm. and that's just going to go literally, all I want to do is no longer than five minutes. Okay. Get used to eating vegetables that are more crunchy. Yes. So that's going to go in there. So what have we got at the moment? So we've got sweet potatoes busy boiling, busy getting nice and soft. But we've got some extra ones that are busy charring mm -hmm. right now. We've got our barley that's coming up to boil and that's going to cook. That takes about 30 minutes. Be patient with it. It okay. does take long. All right. And then our broccoli just steaming. Cool. These are all things you can actually do ahead of time. Okay, amazing. So all it is next for us to do is just to combine this whole, combine, combine all these different ingredients together, make a delicious salad. If you want to find the recipe and to find out exactly what we've used and the quantities of what we've made on the show today, you can go to our website. It's afternoonexpress.co.za. There's a whole bunch of recipes there for you. And go and try and start this meat-free week with us on Afternoon Express. Let's see how you do. Post us all the photos. Send us the feedback. What are you feeling? Is your body feeling a little bit better? If it's not about the health, does it taste a lot better? Bonnie's on standby. <laughs> yeah, so earlier we spoke to Brandon James about his inspiring journey to where he is today. We're back with Brandon and we're joined by his musical partner and husband, Australian-born cello player James Clark. Welcome to The Loft. Thank you. Now, not only do you have your dashing good looks in common, but you also have a name in common. It's is that true. how you knew that he was the one? <laughs> I, I did specifically audition for a cellist named James, that way I didn't have to change too much about myself. <laughs> No, not really. It just happened by accident, really. It confuses most people, though, I think. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's absolutely beautiful. How long have you been married? Uh, almost, almost a year. year. Oh my, I even said it at the same time. time. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the joys and challenges of being married and making music together and working together all the time? Um, well, I think the challenge you just spelled out is being together all the oh, time. All the time. Because, <laughs> you know, we're humans, we all need personal space. But we're pretty good about allowing ourselves that when we have the yeah. chance. But there's so much joy that comes with it. I mean, it's such a dream to be able to travel the world with the person that you love and to make music with the person that you love, do something so no, intimate. No, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and a connection is so important when you're making music, and it's, it's nice that we have a, a real connection outside of just the music making as well to bring realness, I think, to our performance. Yeah, yeah. And you're also recording um, some stuff in South Africa for your forthcoming album. Yes, we are recording a new album uh, in Johannesburg. And uh, it's an album of uh, some covers as well as some originals. And yeah, we're very, really excited about it. Okay, wonderful. You guys are about to perform for us. Hallelujah, am I right? Yes. Yes, take it away. Thank you. <laughs> I used to live alone before 
before I knew ya I've seen your flag on the marble arch Love is not a victory march It's a cold and it's a broken Hallelujah 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 Maybe there's a God above All I ever learned from love was tell the truth I didn't come to fool ya And even though it all went wrong I'll stand before the Lord of song With nothing on my lips but hallelujah Hallelujah Absolutely beautiful. You've definitely pulled at all our heartstrings. Did you perform at your wedding? Uh, no. No, actually. Oh, we had a very, very low key wedding. It was, <laughs> yes. it was nice and relaxed. We'll have a big celebration <laughs> soon. Yeah. Thank you so much. That was absolutely beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> After the break, we're joined by dietitian Kelly Schroeder to talk all about how nutrition can help our libido. And she'll be making us a delicious Nutri Blast. Don't go away. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, a healthy sex life is not only important in maintaining a healthy relationship, but also in maintaining your own health. As you know, Nutri Bullet is helping us lead a healthy lifestyle. And today we have dietitian uh, Kelly Schroeder back in the loft to give us some advice, also to make us a perfect Nutri Blast to give uh, our libido a little bit of a healthy boost. <laughs> okay, why is a healthy sex life good for you? I mean, I, I think I know why that's important. <laughs> but really, why is it actually physically good for your so body? So there are a number of actual health benefits like improved sleep quality, better immunity, okay. it eases pain, supposedly. Really? Yes. Tell me more. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it helps you to manage stress better. Okay. And apart from anything else, it is physical activity. We're always being encouraged to do more exercise for those health benefits, for cardiovascular benefits, for physical stamina, for physical strength. So it does contribute to that. Now, we always discuss this, and Kelly's a huge believer that everything comes back to food, and I believe that food fixes everything. So what can you avoid and what must you include in your diet for, 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 for optimal sexual health? Right. So, of course, we start with general health. You need to eat well enough to be healthy. If you yeah. are sick and tired and you have low energy levels, you're not going to have brilliant yeah. sexual health. So if you're also looking at your ho your hormones, so you need healthy sexual hormones in order to function properly like that. So you're looking at some of the foods that might impair those hormones would be yeah. things like trans fats. So the poor quality fats that you would get in takeaway foods and nasty processed snacks that you shouldn't be yeah. eating. There are so many reasons why you shouldn't eat those, and this is another one of them. So alcohol is another one that you should possibly avoid. If you Even though when you have a lot of alcohol, you think that you <laughs> <laughs> So it's, it's the quantity. It's extremely exactly. moderate consumption might yeah. be beneficial, 
but it very quickly turns into excess. So if you're yeah. concerned at all, then you should probably avoid alcohol. Yeah. Um, and then uh, when you're looking at things to include more of, you're really wanting a really good broad range of healthy food. So supposedly a Mediterranean diet can improve sexual function apart from other things. So, I mean, the Mediterranean mm. diet is wonderful for general health, and this is just one of those things that yeah. it will contribute to. So there you're looking at really healthy fats, consumption of fish, loads of vegetables, legumes, fruits, and a tiny little bit of red wine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a tiny bottle mm. of red wine. Okay. And then there are lots of other foods that are supposedly aphrodisiacs, and they've been researched to certain extents, and there's not a Isn't whole lot true, of... Isn't that true, though? Let's discuss figs and oysters <laughs> and cherries. I mean, will that actually physically, inside your body, make you more...? So that's what we don't know for sure. There okay. are some ingredients inside those foods that might help with things like general mental stimulation, feeling good, serotonin production. And then there are other parts of those foods, like oysters have a really good level of zinc, which is important for sexual health. Okay. So you're looking at the nutrients that some of those foods contain and then other effects that they may have. So chocolate, for example, it, I mean, on the chocolate. It, it sort of is the traditional seductive <laughs> food. We love chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not really been researched to have a direct effect to sexual health. Okay. It's just that perhaps psychologically we associate it and that's exactly. why it works. Yeah, it makes me happy. Throw chocolate at me any time of day, whenever you want. But then it's also important to note that if you do have a low libido, it mm. could also be tied into something else. Like um, in last week's show, we had somebody who was discussing uh, adrenal fatigue. Yes. So if maybe Precisely. other things could be happening mm. in your life as well for you to have a low libido. Absolutely. So what else should we be looking for? So things like obesity and cardiovascular okay. disease, generally things like diabetes, all of those will affect your ability to function properly so okay. and also the biggest thing is stress management and fatigue yeah. like you said so those things go hand in hand if you're not taking care of yourself your body's not going to work the way you want it to yeah, but it doesn't mean if you have a low libido that something else could be wrong with you well absolutely so it's is that like the number one telltale out. sign like I've got a low libido that means maybe I'm suffering from some other disorder possibly yes I, okay. I mean, it's certainly worth checking out. I okay. mean, I think the same is true for any sign or symptom that your body gives you. That's not okay. really what you would like it to be. All right. Well, we're going to be making a little nutri blast to up your libido. <laughs> oh, let's see. We've got peaches, chocolate, strawberries, <laughs> banana. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but tell us why you've included all of these okay. deliciously sexy ingredients. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so the chocolate is there for obvious reasons. Okay. Tastes delicious. Definitely. Yes. And it also supposedly stimulates our minds and helps us to produce serotonin. It's a field. Do you know food. that it's true? We actually, I was actually on this show, we had somebody measuring my brain while I was eating chocolate, and it had the same effects on your brain as when you are making love. Wow. It makes you feel that happy. Okay. So, is that more we chocolate? Have? Can we find some more? Yeah, more chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what else okay. are we throwing in? And we've got strawberries and mm -hmm. peaches, and those are okay. beautiful sources of antioxidants. Yes. Yeah. The peaches are also full of beta carotene, which is a lovely nutrient, precursor lovely. to vitamin A. Good for beta carotene. Mm. So, what is that good for? Yeah, it's good for your skin health and also for your hormones. Oh, yeah, we definitely want production. good skin. There you go. Yes, Throw in the peaches. Wonderful. And that is a banana, so that's fantastic for serotonin production, full of B vitamins, also potassium, magnesium. Yeah. Some and ice. some ice. I'll pass you pumpkin seeds Thank there. You. So, pumpkin seeds are full of zinc. They're a wonderful source of zinc. Okay. And that is ginger. So, ginger. Maybe not as popular as chocolate, but it is also one of those traditional aphrodisiac foods. Yeah, I have a lot of ginger, just especially when it feels like you're getting sick. Okay, then what is that? Almond milk? Or... That's almond milk. So almonds are also full of magnesium and vitamin E, which are both important for sexual health. And then health. I'm going to top it up with some water. There you go. Very nice. Let's see what it tastes Usually like. Usually we make like really full ones, but this one's quite... I think this is going to be very tasty. It's an interesting so. flavour combination. Okay. I'm getting excited already. <laughs> okay, let's test it out. A lovely... Oh, okay, wait. This is so funny. This always happens. It's always <laughs> easy for Gilly to take it off. There we go. No, because I tie it too tight. <laughs> 
I mean, for you, it's just so easy because I've got pup muscles at the moment. I've got to go and train. I've got to go drink new, new, more nutri blasts. <laughs> okay, let's test this one out. Beautiful. It's even a good colour. Mm, it looks healthy. It is. It's peachy. <laughs> peachy. Okay. Cheers. Delicious. That it's is another delicious. winner. You really come up with good combinations. And mm. have I mentioned that you are looking incredibly beautiful today? <laughs> <Stop. Mama. laughs> For more information <laughs> on recipes that can help you get healthy and stay healthy, visit NutriBullet.co.za and find the ones perfect for you, just like I found this one <laughs> perfect for me. Now, we are also excited to announce that we are starting a new competition on the show where you can win a beautiful NutriBullet. This thing is amazing. And I love it so much already. I'm loving everything right now. And, of course, it's perfect to help you live that healthy lifestyle. Simply uh, SMS the keyword NutriBullet bullet your name and city to 33728 that's double three seven two eight sms's are cost at one rand fifty each t's and c's apply and can be found on afternoonexpress.co.za now after the break it's time for win a home on afternoon express we'll be right back Win a home on Afternoon Express, where three design contestants are turning three empty properties at Valdivia Estate in the Cape Winelands into dream homes using finishes provided by Caesarstone and Plascon. Vote for your favourite and you could win. What an exciting season it has been and it's a brand new week for Winner Home on Afternoon Express. But for our design contestants, they're still tackling their master bedrooms. It's halfway through their third challenge and with less than a week left to complete the challenge, I went over to Valdiví to see how they're coming along. It's fine, okay, and then you can drop it all the way to here. Uh, Rudolph. Sorry to interrupt. I don't know. How's it going? Good, and yourself? Very good, thank you. So this place is looking pretty interesting. I see different colours on the walls, I see paintings, I see new finishes since I came to see you last. How's it going? What have you got planned? No, it's all good. We're busy with the lighting here in the bulkhead. Um, we're going to carry through with the paint that we've used in the um, bathroom on the opposite walls and the side walls. But this is going to be feature wall and it's going to have some um, panning on here. And as mm. you can see, we've measured it out already this morning. So we're ready to start with that. So these are the different colour options that we're going for? Yeah. Have you got a thought process of which one you're going to choose yet? I'm not sure yet. Um, we've already made a selection with the curtaining colour and um, as you can see we have the artwork here so it's literally I still need to put on a second coat I don't want to make the same mistake I made last time with the bathroom ah. so I'm really gonna make sure these are all test the pots and then as soon as we've made a decision we can go for it so we want to try and make this room look a little bit bigger and I see you've gone with the sort of wood finishings that you've got here and less mirrors I don't know are there gonna be any mirrors in yeah. this space? no no mirrors um, but what I really like about this is that it adds luxury to the space as you can see it really yeah. it has warmth to it dressing room is something where you really want to feel comfortable in yeah. and um, make the right choice for the day. It kind of feels like you've gone with an elegance with that. It almost brings like a, an age with it, a wisdom with it, which I'm excited about because your bathroom is quite fresh. It's got that real that real foresty feel and it's light, it's fresh and friendly. Then this has got that slightly more sophisticated feel. What are you thinking bed-wise? Bed-wise, um, unfortunately, we can only fit a queen-size bed in here um, so that I still have enough space on either side for bedside tables. Well, it looks like it's coming along very, very nicely. Are you going to be done in time? Yeah, definitely. We'll make it. Cool. Well, he's confident. I hope our other contestants are too. Well, Rudolf seems to be well on his way, and I'm really liking his vision. It's time now to catch up with Minentle halfway through his master bedroom. Minentle, the man I'm putting my money behind. How's it going? Uh, good in yourself. Better than last time. Very good, thank you. Yeah, better than last time, we hope. So it seems like a little bit more effort. There's actually paint on the wall. I'm very happy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what have you got planned for this master bedroom? I'm still going with uh, taking the outside into the inside. So I'm still going for those very earthy colours. But I'm very, I'm definitely going bolder with the, just to make a statement behind the bed because I feel like I played it too safe with the guest bedroom, just using one colour. I chose to carry the theme all the, around the, the apartment. So I. For timber floors, and that will act nice with the earthy colors that I'm bringing into the room. So, my main feature is still going to be the back of the bed uh, where I'm going for this uh, very bold uh, headboard, and I'm having the rest of the room in a very light color, which I'm going to go for a clean and white. Um, so just to bring in some life into the room, I'm going to still be bringing in some plants and I'm taking through the elements of that uh, modern frame 
It's going to be seen in the furniture that I bring into the room. So viewers can, can expect that consistency um, between the guest bedroom, the bathroom, and um, the master bedroom. The detail is going to be very important in this room with the bold statement like your back wall. So what have you got planned with Caesar Stone here? Uh, with Caesar Stone, I'm bringing it as uh, shelving. So I'm just, um, I, just, I want to show the potential of Caesar Stone, how it works with other decorating items. So I'm going to bring it into the on both sides of my of my of my bed as floating shelves, and I'm also having a third shelf that I'm going to decorate just to show to show the versatility of Caesar Stone. So naturally, it's called a bedroom. What's the plan with the bed here? For the bed, I'm keeping up uh, with the very modern look that I went for in the guest bedroom, mm -hmm. having that frame bed which is very contemporary and very modern, which is my type of style. So I thought it would work perfectly in this room because there's very high ceilings. So as you enter, it gives that sort of double volume feel. Yeah. Mm. So the viewers all want to know, I want to know, have there been any hiccups or will we finish on time this time? Uh, yes, definitely this time around. I learned a lot from the previous experience. So yeah, we should be done on time. Good, well I'm glad to see you excited about this project. We've seen what the two boys are up to. Let's go find out what the lady of the home has got planned. Good luck. Cheers, man. So welcome to my halfway bedroom. Wow, it's actually looking pretty much done from a painting perspective, it yeah, seems. Yeah, the painting's done. Compared to the other guys. Uh, only thing I've noticed that's different is that you've got a hole in your wall. Yes, yeah, so I decided to think of it out of the box and I went for a hole in the wall for my headboard. So uh, it's going to be a bookshelf storage space above the headbed. Oh, I can see it, I can see it. So what is the big plan here? So what are you hoping to do? What still needs to be done? So I went for a very uh, white neutral palette as I did in my guest bedroom. I used In The Mood once again here. I really love the colour. It uh, reminds me of nature and it fits with the timber flooring. So I'm going to put the wooden bed right here with two bedside tables um, with lamps on them. Oh, it should be absolutely amazing. Have you used Caesar Stone in the space? I used Caesar Stone in my cupboards. It's going to be an exposed cupboard as I did in the guest bedroom, but with a bit of a twist. With this colour scheme, it seems like it's going to be nice and spacious and open, but what is going to be the wow factor? So I decided to print up and blow up, blow up one of my own photographs oh. against this wall. And also I painted my trusses to expose the architecture, the structure that was used. I really like the colour. So we should trust you that it's going to look amazing? <laughs> yes, you should. Okay, fantastic. And it will be done on time? Yes, definitely. You okay. know me. Okay, to the okay. lady of the home, good Thank luck. you. <laughs> Oh, the laughter doesn't even leave when we head over to Val de Vie. I'm so jealous that one of you get to win one of those apartments valued at more than 3 million rand. It's going to be such an exciting addition. While our design contestants were hard at work on, on the Val de Vie properties, I took a moment to check out some of the other facilities on offer at the estate. Take a look. When you say wine, you've immediately got my attention. Valdevi is home to some of the best wines the Western Cape has to offer. And that is why this development is so aptly called The Vines, where you can find a starter home or something slightly bigger. Divine, isn't it? Already boasting a vineyard, equestrian facilities and more, the newest addition to the Valdevi lifestyle is the neighbouring Pearl Valley Golf Course. Golfing enthusiasts, boy, do I have a treat for you. Or if you're just somebody who likes the rolling greens and the wide open space, this is the Jack Nicklaus designed golf course on Pearl Valley Estate. The championship Pearl Valley course is among the top golf destinations in the country and attracts local and international golfing enthusiasts. Well, Pearl Valley has recently become part of the Valdevi estate, which means that all of this could be your new backyard. Spectacular, isn't it? <laughs> and last but not least, the Polo Village, where our three winter home apartments are based. This is the perfect combination of lock up and go and estate living. So, here to tell us more, Reg Nietling, marketing director from Valdevi. Ray! Hey, Danilo. How are you doing? Very good with you. Very good, thanks. Oh, welcome. I've fallen in love with the place. It is absolutely incredible. And there's so much on offer. How do you guys cater for different types of lifestyles? Yeah, for us, it was really the secret to our success. Uh, you know, like along with security, uh, when we bought Pro Valley, we knew that uh, it would be a very big draw card for all the golfers and people that love that kind of, you know, lifestyle. Here at Valdeby, we've got the equestrian side, and we've got the wine farm, we've got miles of trails to run and bike. We've got gyms, indoor and outdoor, pools, indoor and outdoor, we've got tennis courts. 
So there really is something for everybody here, and the four people love it, and, and, and you can just see it in the sales. So they say diamonds are a girl's best friend, but Valdivie's new friend is Pearl Valley. Well done on the acquisition. Thank you very much. It was, a, it was a dream of ours for a long time. You know, fortunately, things worked out, and I mean, they are our next door neighbors, and it just really made sense. And, and I think the combined amenities that we can offer now to our residents um, and our future residents is just really unmatched anywhere in the world. We've, we've traveled all over the world looking at these type of estates and, and uh, we couldn't find a place anywhere in the world that has a golf course with the quality of the Pearl Valley Golf Course uh, and the equestrian facilities, the open areas and you, know, you can't create that anywhere. So it's close to Cape Town, it's close to the University in Stellenbosch. We're very excited obviously, we've invested a lot of money, time, effort and passion not just into Valdivia and Pearl Valley but also into the, into the greater community and we really believe in this valley and uh, um, I think when people come here they see that passion. Sure, and one of our viewers gets to call you their neighbor very, very soon. So what does the future hold for this incredible neighborhood? Well, it's our vision to make this really a secure place, you know, for families and people to really come live their dreams. Um, just like us, all the, all the shareholders live here permanently. We're very passionate about it and uh, yeah, we just want to create the secure environment for people. With all these amenities, uh, we've got schools as well coming, hotels, but it's very important that we keep that uh, you know, community feel. We also believe in you know, like the greater community and, um, yeah, and, and, and to keep it safe. Unfortunately in South Africa, you know, security is a big issue and uh, we really pride ourselves on our security. And so safety is definitely our number one priority here at Baldivie. Sure, it is such a beautiful neighborhood. I really, really can't wait for one of you to win the home. If you haven't entered the competition yet, head over to privateproperty.co.za, click on the win a home link and enter now. But I have to ask you something, because I've always wondered this. If I live on Valdivie Estate, am I called a Valdivinian, a Valdivonian, a Valdonite? Like, what do you call it? You're called a legend <laughs> and a very smart man. I like this guy, he can stay. Well, remember that you can experience the beauty of Valdiví for yourself. If you're the lucky grand prize winner of one of those three completed apartments, make sure you head over to Valdiví, uh, private property, in fact, .co.za and vote for your favorite design contestant's uh, bathroom or room or house to stand a chance to win. Vote for your favorite design contestant's bathroom on privateproperty.co.za and stand a chance of winning Plascon paint to the value of 5,000 Rand. You also automatically get entered into the draw to win one of the three finished apartments valued at over 3 million Rand. Winner Home is proudly brought to you by Private Property in association with Nedbank. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. So we're celebrating Meat Free Monday on the show today by extending it to Meat Free Week, the entire week on the show. Uh, Clem is going to be creating some really interesting and exciting recipes that do not use any kinds of meat, with the idea obviously just to change things up, I guess, in some ways. Yeah. And today we're using an ingredient that I think you kind of know you've made it when someone names something after you, because this must have been named after Bob Marley, because it's B. Marley. Barley. It actually was named after Bob Marley. Really? You're joking? No, just joking. <laughs> I thought my final would have been amazing and then it just wasn't at all. So how do we put the final touches on our salad today? Okay, so our barley's cooked and I've added one of my favorite ingredients, spring onions, because I love it so Yummy. much. And I've added the spring onions to it while it's still warm and that's where it takes up, it picks up like all, all that savory flavor. goodness. And it takes the complete crunchy out of the, the, the spring onion itself, so it kind of wilts it slightly. Well, what I've done is I kept some pieces small, some pieces big, so mm -hmm. the bigger pieces got some crunch in there. Cool. Next thing is our broccoli that I've just blanched. Okay. That goes in there. And blanching also gives it that really nice, dark, rich green color, so you don't lose all of the nutrients in it. Absolutely, so I've got some almonds that I've just roughly chopped. That's gonna give us some amazing Sweet. crunch. You've taken the skin off these al almonds. Is there a reason for that? Uh, well, you can just, whatever's available whatever's in store. Available if in you store. have the skins on, totally go for them. Cool. We've got the slivered ones, absolutely fine. And also, I've heard that um, almonds, if you're eating them with your meal, actually help you stay fuller for longer. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, there you, you go. You should actually do some research on that. Cool, so what I'm gonna ask you to do while I'm finishing this up, can you add some mustard to that red wine vinegar? Sure, do you have a spoon for me or something? Okay, no, never mind, I'll do it, because I'm just like, I'm a one spoon kind of guy. Never mind. Okay, well, I can just sort of like hoi it in hoi, here, right? Hoi, So um, I've seasoned uh, the barley a little bit with a little bit of salt, mm. and I'm adding some feta, so I've been careful not to add too much salt. Okay. 
Oh, 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 that's honey, by the way. Oh, I thought you what know what? Right. It's, all, it's all gonna come together. It's, it's all, all going come together. together in the same thing, right? It's a mixed masala. It's a mixed salad, <laughs> isn't it? Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna add that straight in. So that's I've got whole grain mustard. Oh, sorry, I've Dijon mustard. <laughs> and so it's a honey and mustard dressing. <laughs> and then we add, made well, it. I love using mustard. It just adds such amazing flavor. Yes, it also adds that smokiness. Cool. Chuck your vinaigrette in there. And that's red wine vinegar. Red wine. You can use white wine vinegar, any vinegar, some garlic. chopped garlic. That goes in. Coriander, or is that not parsley? It's parsley, because I know you're not a fan. I don't mind it anymore. You've made me eat it. Cool. And drizzle with olive oil. Cool. And I want to give this a good mix. And the reason I haven't added my sweet potato just yet, because okay. I want to make sure I get this well cooperated, because our sweet potato would actually break up at this point. Mm -hmm. We don't mind it breaking up, but we don't want okay. it to be too. Well, I want to take this to the table, so can we just maybe like. Coy this in there. Yes. Let's coy these go for it, go in for there. It. Sweet potato in. Would have been nice to like plate it really cool, but I think this looks also awesome. So people can see all the different ingredients. Absolutely. You can see how healthy you are being. And I think Monday should be like feast day. Everybody shares it from one platter. Don't okay. you think? Amazing. Okay, let me just tip. Let's tip. Let's tip. Oh, you're going to tip it in there. Okay. Oh, no, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. All right. All right. Go, 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 Clem. Go. The faster you can do it, the better. Okay, cool. That's that's probably enough for everyone. That's perfect. That's, that's perfect. <laughs> Amazing. Freeze the rest. Keep it at home for yourself, and yeah. hopefully you'll be able to serve that to the rest of your family for an entire week. I'm following you delicious. with the spoon. And we're serving it on Afternoon Express today. Here you go. Wow. Awesome. wow. That was amazing. <laughs> all right. Who thought healthy that could look so good? We'll wow. see you tomorrow. Thanks so much to all of our guests. Good night. Happy eating. Bye, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on the show as well today. Thank you. Of course. Coming up tomorrow on Afternoon Express, we're joined by Alison, who, after surviving a horrific attack in the 90s, turned her life around and became a motivational speaker. And we also take a look at a youth organization called Life Choices. The hottest address on TV is Winner Home on Afternoon Express. Proudly brought to you by Private Property in association with Nedbank. Another feel-good production.